Hi, Hana family. I hope you're all doing well. I know I am. At least as well as anybody can be doing in this weird quarantine stage of life that we're in. I've pulled together a good assortment, or at least I think it's a good assortment of stories to keep you entertained. So sit back and enjoy the show. If you like what you hear, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. It makes me do a happy dance. Story one, the copycat. During my life, I've experienced this several times in different houses. It's something I call a copycat. I don't think ghost is an accurate term. Since the forms that this thing copies are alive and well. I don't think it's a form of astral or mental projection either. The people that it's choosing to copy are usually awake and active, sometimes in the very next room. Doppelganger, maybe? My first such experience happened when I was six years old. This house was exceedingly haunted anyway, although I don't remember all of the details of what went on there. We lived there for about five years, starting from when I was three years old. The garage access was in our living room, and it had a spare room inside it for some odd reason. That room was frequently used as a playroom for my brother and I. One day, I went out to that spare room by myself. I got to about the middle of the room, and suddenly, before me, appeared a transparent humanoid figure. I couldn't quite make out the details below the neck, but above the neck it was very clear and very distinct. It was my brother's head and mine, faces so clearly detailed, but also equally as transparent as the body. The heads flopped right to left, phasing straight through each other, and they grinned at me. It seemed amused. When I think about this, I still shiver at the strangeness. At the time, it was the most terrifying experience I could have imagined. I backed up slowly. It was floating about a half inch off the ground. I continued to back up until I hit the wall behind me, and I sat down hard on the floor. And when my bottom hit the floor, the thing in front of me vanished. Needless to say, I ran back inside immediately. And I never felt comfortable going to that room in the garage alone again. And I've seen similar copycat-esque creatures on numerous occasions growing up. Story 2. Hell. In the early 70s, my parents bought a house in upstate New York. My family was the very first to live in this house that was not a direct descendant of the people who built the house. Well, my parents obtained the deed. In it were the names of the entire family. Everyone who had owned the house lived there before us, dating back to 1832. I think that the original family is still there. Among the many things that happened to us in this house, Doors opening and closing, all by themselves. Someone walking up and down the stairs every single night. When I was about 11 years old, I finally got my own room. Being the youngest of four, this was a very big deal to me. It was a rite of passage. I was placed in the smallest room in the house, but I loved it. Until that night. At 4.12 a.m., I heard the most horrible noise. It sounded like someone being tortured. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. I ended up downstairs on the couch. The next night, I tried again. And, again, at exactly 4.12 a.m., I was up. Those same torturous screams. This went on for two years. And then I got sick. When I was 14, I got a very bad case of psoriasis. That may not sound bad, but it was. Even my doctors, and I had many, said that they had never seen a case this bad. It made me look like a monster. It was head to toe. I had large patches on my face, my back, and it was so painful. And it only took a total of three weeks for this to start and to grow to cover my whole body. I didn't leave the house for months, thinking that I looked like a burn victim. I stayed in my room, and every night, at 4.12 a.m., I was woken up by that horrible screaming noise. 
My parents started to get very worried about my behavior. They wanted me to see a professional. I wanted to get to the library to find out what was in my room. And then it came to me one day to look at the deed. It seems that a young girl about my age was burned to death in my bedroom in 1892. I obtained this exact information from the family of the previous owners. The young girl was in her aunt's care at the time. They'd fixed the room up after the fire, and they'd hid her there like a dirty little secret. The girl lived in that room for ten years before she killed herself. Now, I wasn't about to wait for ten years for this to stop. And as it turned out, I didn't need to. One night, I sat up all night. I just wanted to talk to her to see if I could help. Obviously, a girl like that didn't have many friends. And honestly, I didn't either. And I knew that she had something to do with me being the way I was. I needed answers. 4.12 a.m. came, and like clockwork, the screaming started. I taped a note to my bedroom door, telling my parents that whatever they heard, they were not allowed to open that door. And then I started screaming with her. And she suddenly stopped. But I didn't. I kept screaming, and I begged her to help me. I told her that I know how she feels. Eventually, I stopped screaming, and I cried the rest of the night. The following morning, I had a doctor's appointment, and he noticed right away that the places on my back were fading, and the large mark on my forehead had gotten smaller and lost some of its color. Within three months, my skin was completely clear, exactly as it was before the screaming had started, and I've never had another instance of psoriasis again. The noises at 4.12 a.m. stopped. I never heard them again. Maybe this is all in my head, but I really believe that if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have got those marks on me. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have lost them. Hopefully, I helped her find closure. Story 3. Slumber Party I went to visit a few friends who rented a house together and lived as roommates. I was told the history of the house, but I really didn't want to believe the stories. It was pretty typical of ghost stories. You know, elderly woman seen walking around the corner, a telephone cord that would swing by itself, animated dolls, you know the works. The story goes that this old lady who had lived there had died in a pretty gruesome death because of a home invasion. And apparently they had just recarpeted the floor and left the chalk outline where her body had laid. I don't know about that part, but I know that the room that she had passed away in, I always felt a little uneasy in that room. I guess I was afraid of seeing something or feeling something. One evening, we all decided to have a sleepover. Almost all of us worked together, and we decided to carpool to work the next morning. The night seemed all right, as long as the lights stayed on, and everyone hung around and watched TV. But the night would bring things that I didn't want to know about. We got ready for bed, and we decided to sleep in that room, the room she was murdered in. The first thing we heard when we turned off the light was a slow rapping on the door, and the neighbor's dog was crying this mournful cry. Yeah, we all looked at each other, and we picked up our sleeping bags and booked it to the living room. Four of us slept in front of the couch, and... One person each slept on the couches. As soon as we turned the lights off, we heard someone sit on the coffee table and then knocking on the walls. I made the mistake of telling this thing that I wanted to get some sleep and that it needed to knock it off. And then I heard a Christmas tree in the other room shake and an ornament get yanked off. The TV guide flew off the coffee table and hit one of the guys in our group. He put the guide back on the table, and was promptly hit by a coaster, and then something kicked one of the girls laying in the floor. She thought it was me, but neither I nor anyone else was near her. Things continued to fly off the coffee table. After about an hour of disruptions, and my threatening, we decided to see if we could recreate the sounds with what we thought was causing the knocking and the banging. We found an extra Christmas tree pole behind the sofa and set it straight up and let it drop against the wall. It resembled what we had been hearing. 
We screamed and ran into the girls' room. Everyone got tucked into bed, and I turned the lights off. And as soon as I got in bed, we heard a loud thud. I got out of bed and turned the lights back on and discovered an address book on the floor. It had been thrown off the dresser and against the door. As soon as I got back in bed and my head hit the pillow, something came from the direction of the ceiling and hit me square in the head. I turned the lights back on to find a kid's meal toy in our bed. Turned the lights back off and got back in bed. And that's when something hit me square in the mouth. This time I was scared and I was angry. I once again turned the lights back on. That same figure I'd found before, that kid's meal toy, was back in the bed. This time the head of it had been turned all the way around. I threw it in the closet. I packed up my bag and left that room. And everyone followed me. But the same things happened again. We were getting pelted with things coming from every corner of the room. We did not have a peaceful night's sleep. And I don't know what about me being there made this spirit or spirits more active. But I learned my lesson. I'll never stay in their house again. No more sleepovers there for me.